You know, it's good to be taught. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. It's good to be taught. Um, something that just recently uh, I learned is that you can just do something because that's what you want to do. I know that sounds funny. Um, when it comes to how you treat your wife, um, this is something, this is not necessarily for Father's Day, but that just happened as I walked my wife down the steps. Um, I always found it odd or a struggle to, you know, I don't know if that makes sense. Some of you maybe were raised in such a way um, that it just, that's just how you did it. Like that, it was, so you, there in a sense, were trained in that way to help someone down the steps or, you know, uh, get the door or, or maybe to, maybe even a little bit more, right? I don't know, whatever it might be. Um, but then, you know, maybe you weren't trained in that way. You know, but you can teach an old dog new tricks. See, dogs learn tricks because they're taught. Well, so do so do we. We learn. We can. We can be fifty years old, and we can learn something new that would bless the Lord and bless others. Aren't you thankful that you're not limited to where you're at today? But you can be taught, and you can grow, and you can be. Bless and more of a blessing in, 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 your, in your lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to this morning, um, it's Father's Day. Hey, you know, I love that. I got a cool text from a, a, a pastor. Uh, I, I wouldn't even say he's a friend, but I wouldn't say really even really that close, more of a mentor. Um, and this morning I got a text from him, Happy Father's Day. I was like, that was, he's, a, he's an older gentleman, maybe 80 years old. A couple different pastors that are 80 something. And I was like, wow, that was really special to me. That they're telling, telling me, Happy Father's Day, <clears throat> and so I, I want to talk um, to all generations this morning um, to young men. I just thought it was significant. Uh, it's time for you to be the be the man. There's young there's young men in here that you have to see yourself as not just a man anymore, not just a boy, but a, a father, and a father leads and teaches. But one of the greatest uh, attributes, I believe, that's demonstrated by a father, and young men don't understand this, and that's this. And many times women don't understand this. Many times anybody but a father won't understand this, and that's sacrifice. It's something that um, when you love, when you love, you lay down. No, 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 I don't mean like quit. You lay some stuff down. You lay some hobbies down. You lay some video games down, maybe. You lay your life down. You pick up something else. And I'm not getting on a soapbox here. I'm just talking about there is a cost to love. And I I really believe that it's something that God instilled in the fathers. Um, and and, and, And this is where you see in the military. You see uh, predominantly, not just because of uh, different strengths, but men run to battle. It's a God-given gift. It's a God-given uh, to protect and to provide. Now, when you protect and when you provide, a lot of times it won't be celebrated. A lot of times it's just, I would have done it this way. So I'm talking to men this morning, but I'm also talking to everybody here. When you were a dad, or maybe you weren't a dad, but when you were a son, sometimes you'd say, well, when I'm a dad, I would have done it this way. And something that was just rolling around in me this week was even uh, the price. I told my wife this. I said, what if God had a wife and it was time to sacrifice Jesus? I wonder what the wife would have said. Is there another way? In other words, sometimes when we're parenting, our, I'm so thankful for fathers and women, mothers and daughters, right? Uh, both, are, both are vital because they tender, they tender the, the, the man's hand, you know, where when you bring direction and correction, they're going to soften that correction. But God needs the strength. He needs the strength of a man in a home. And in this day and age, uh, that's actually not celebrated. Not only toler- not not even t- so much tolerated as much as it's belittled. And so, um, if if we were to go back 
We don't know this right now, but this is just something to ponder and to think about just for a moment. But if we were to go back um, to World War II, if we all of a sudden got, just got launched into World War II, the question is, would we be willing to lay our lives in this generation, lay our lives down for what we believe in, or would we say it costs too much? See, there's something that happened, and I believe the Lord is moving this. You see this, that as you see the Lord's return approaching, he says, I'm going to turn again my, the Father's hearts to the children. And so what's going to happen in men, is they're going to have greater love for their children and for others than they do for themselves. And so what you're going to see is sacrifice is going to, it's going to be rising again. The laying down of life, the laying down for, for one another. In the, same, in the same way that uh, uh, we would lay ourselves down for our country because we loved our country, now I don't know if we would because we don't know if it would be worth it. Because we don't know, we don't know what we've been given until it's taken away, that freedom. No, this is not an Uncle Sam message. This is just a question of sometimes we don't know what we've been given until it's taken away and what we lay our lives down for. And so this is just a, just a I guess, a, a word of just uh, maybe encouragement, something that was in my heart uh, earlier this week as we come into Father's Day. Um, thank you for your sacrifice is just what I heard. Sometimes your sacrifice is not enough or not seen that way. Sometimes your sacrifice is uh, perceived as, why aren't you home? But this would be the response I'd say. Thank you for your sacrifice, and thank you for loving your family. And so with that, thank you for your sacrifice, and then this other word. And, and so this word, is, it, it's so funny because it's an encouraging word, and yet it's a corrective word on a Father's Day. So out of the box, not what I want in, my, in myself like to do. And I was thinking, 2 Timothy 4.17, and the Lord stood next to me and gave me the words to minister so that through me his message would be fully proclaimed. But this is, the other, this is the other portion to the thank you for your service, but this is, and thank you for your sacrifice, thank you for loving your family. But this is the statement that I heard very clearly in my heart. As long as you talk about what they're not, they will never be. Amen. As long as you talk about, this goes to, as a dad, to your children. As long as you talk about what your children are not, they'll never be. As long as you talk about what your spouse is not, this is a whole family series, by the way, and we haven't got into it, but this is, this, is, this is a nugget. If you can put this down in your heart, as long as you talk about what your wife's not, she'll never be. As long as you talk about what your child, your child or your husband is not, how he's always this, as long as you, you'll never be what, so this is where the Bible tells us to call those things that are not as though they are. In other words, to speak in faith and, and say like just the same way that God said some things about us that we couldn't say about ourselves, right? And so this is important to do. It's important to speak to, to our children, but not just our children. It's important to speak to our fathers. It's important to speak to our mothers. And this morning, it, 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 we're going to talk this morning about a, a commandment, the only commandment, that we see that it has an, a, a promise attached to it. And that is honor thy father and thy mother. Honor your father and your mother. And it's something that um, it maybe has gotten lost a little bit uh, by the wayside. But we're going we're gonna to talk about this. And this is, uh, it'll go well with you. Like this covers everything. Is what's going on in the home um, has everything to do with honor. And how you honor your father and how you honor your mother. Like there's so many things that are in your or my lives. Uh, it, it, how we have treated or how we treat or how our mom and dad's treated. or how, there's, there's a history there that has allowed things in or preserved things or opened doors to things. By just simply how we honor our father and mother. How can you say that, Pastor Nate? Well, because the Bible tells me that. And sometimes we, we think honor our father and mother. This is uh, Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 2, uh, quoting uh, Exodus, okay, when the Ten Commandments were given and then rewritten again. And, and we read it like this where it says, Honor thy father, oh, children, obey your parents in the Lord. 
uh, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise. And so we, 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 there are certain things that you and I will do because we see that it's good for us. So I could talk to you today about giving, praying, healing, I mean, for anything. As long as you see it's good for you, you're all in, right? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, if it's good for me, yeah, we'll do that. And this is how a lot of times we look at the word and we say, is it good for me? Yeah, it's good for me. So we read this right here. Honor your children, honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise. It goes on to say, uh, if it, it'll say that it may be well with you and you live long in the land. Okay? It's, that it would go well with you and you'd live long on the earth. Wow, that's why I need to do that. No, no, no. You know why you need to do that? You know why you need to honor your father and mother? Tell, somebody tell me. Why should I honor my mom and dad? Just so it goes well with me? Huh? Oh, because God told me that. Because the Lord told me to do it. Not so it goes well with me. It has a promise that it's going to go well with me. But I don't do it because it goes well with me. i got to get back to the foundation of why I do what I do is because the Father told me so. Because, so this is Father's Day. Okay, Every one of us have heard this. Because I, because I said so. Because I said so. Because I said so is something we say all the time. But when we say this, we're saying this. This is what we're really saying. I see farther than you, son. So when our father says something, when the Bible says something, he's saying this, I see farther than you, son. I see farther than you, daughter. And you know, the same way you can't sit and explain to your two-year-old uh, or three-year-old, five-year-old, or 15-year-old about, no, you need to do it this way. And like, why? You know, they, and you sit and try to, okay, da 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 well, And then they question that. And then you say, I'm saying this because of this. And then they question that. And then they qu- this right here, this right here, honor your father and mother has it, the, the source of everything that's going on in here is how you honor your father and mother is how you will honor your father. Questioning your mom and dad? See, honor, you can't honor what you stand over. We measure, we critique, we go, well, well, is that good for me? Is it going to go well with me? That's why I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that because it's going to go well with me. Yeah, yeah, mom and dad said to do that. Yeah, if I do that, I'll get the keys to the car. Yeah, if I do that, I get the cookie. Yeah, if I do that, no, no, I do that. I honor, I place and esteem my father and mother simply because the Lord told me so. But also this, sometimes we don't remember this. God chose my father and my mother. Yeah, your deadbeat dad or your mom that was blah, blah, blah. That was the one that God chose for you. And so every time I dishonor my mom and dad, I'm actually dishonoring the Lord. Every, what do I, I say, well, I, when I disqualify my mom or my dad, I'm disqualifying the Lord's choice. That's, it sounds crazy to say it that way, but... But there's young people in here today that are, would say to their dad that I, I don't like the way that dad does that. And when I become a dad, I'm, hmm. We're stand, or where are we standing in this? Where are we standing? Are we standing in honor? Can, let me ask you this. Do you, can you, can you um, critique what you honor? Can you stand over in a, it, no, you can't. I used to think, uh, I wrote, had wrote a statement down that I used to think um, that we, we honor others uh, when we love, but when, what I, I'm going to, I've said it so many times, but I, I rewrote a little bit of it um, recently. Let me type in my passcode here. <laughs> I guess I can't tell you what it is because last time I did that. <laughs> I don't know, you know. Um, I used to think that honor celebrates what another is without stumbling over what it's not. Honor celebrates what somebody is without stumbling over what it's not. But I come to realize um, honor celebrates what one is without recognizing what it's not. 
See, when you recognize what your father or your mother is not, then you have a list. Let me say it this way. In your heart, you hold something. And James chapter 3 tells us this, that out of uh, a, 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 a well, can there be bitter water and sweet water flowing? Is it possible? Can there be olives where there's grapes? Like, it, or I mean, a grape tree doesn't produce olives, does it? Or a grapevine doesn't produce? No. He, he says, neither can our, my heart produce sweet water and bitter water. So, and here's the thing. Honor is a heart thing. And this is the Lord talking to us about, uh, and this is, we're talking again about whole families. You want your family whole? It starts with what you and I have to see right in front of us, a father and a mother who God chose, and he said, you honor them. You esteem them highly. What they say to you, I just don't think that that's right. You think that this is really right? Hey, do you think, bro, do you think mom and dad, let me just do it this way. Hey, do you think we really shouldn't eat off this tree? I mean, bro, come on. It's amazing how the snake just told me exactly what I wanted to hear. And it was reasonable. And it sounded good. But it only led to, it led to death. It led to death. And this is, this is the most foundational thing to a whole family. It really is how I view my father and how I view my mother. Well, you, you, you didn't have a father or mother that abused you and this and that. I'm telling you, it doesn't, didn't say how they treated you determines your honor and how you value them. And, and just what I said at, at the beginning, as long as I talk about all that they're not, they will never be. I watched my mom, and I, I don't know why, but it seems as in the last month, I've, I've just, just, really since Mother's Day, just found more and more value for my mom and my dad. Just, I don't know what's going on in me, but just, like, it just seems like it's just raising, raising and raising and raising to where little things that they would say, I see wisdom in it like I hadn't seen before. Now, I, as I've grown, I'm like, oh, I'm so thankful for their provision, all these kind of things. But I watched my mom, um, who had, had, had a, a pretty crazy uh, past. Uh, foster care, uh, ran away from home, uh, had siblings that were abused, both physically and in other ways. Um, crazy stuff, man. Crazy. I watched her... Uh, I would be one of the siblings out of all of her, I think she had eight, eight, eight brothers and sisters, um, choose to forgive. And all of a sudden, what happened is, is Papa Jim be- came back into our lives, and he became something to us that I don't think he be- was to a lot of other people. It's crazy. Who He, he, was, he was, again, an alcoholic, and kind of kind of to the end. Struggled with the, that very thing. But yet he was da- dad and he was Papa, Papa Jim to us. And how did that happen? It happened because my mom received the word of the Lord and healing from the word. See, your dad, even an apology, can't heal your wounds. Sometimes we're waiting for people to do something that they can't perform. The wounds of a soul, the Lord is the one that heals those. The Lord can heal to where, and he can put back years that the canker worm has eaten. I remember, remember that as my, looking at this, this example, uh, my mom and my dad buying Grandpa Jim a car and then buying him another car. And paying for his house and going and cleaning his apartment. They're, they're buying him, my papa, Papa Jim. They're setting an example to us. But that example was only possible because of forgiveness. But not only just forgiveness, which is a choice, but also allowing the word of God to heal her. Did you know when the word of God goes forth, if we'll receive it as authority in our lives... It's medicine that deals with the spirit, soul, and body. 
The Word of God, when we put it before us, it is healing to us, spirit, soul, and body. So if you've got a wound, a parent wound, I'll tell you, one of the best ways to heal a parent wound is receive the Word of God concerning that wound, right? Take the right medicine, but don't pick at it. Don't talk about your faith. Don't talk about, you want to keep the, fa- you want to keep the dog around? Keep feeding it. You want, to keep a, uh, you want to keep a wound open where you can't relate to mom and dad the way that God created you to? Remember, he chose your mom and dad. Do you think that what God chose, the enemy would love to bring destruction there? Absolutely. There must be something extremely valuable in mom and dad for the enemy to drive a wedge so hard and so deep and so clear that it would keep you from what God designed you to draw from. You're going to have to draw a line, not just in the sand. You're going to have to say, I'm not allowing what heaven sent to me to be robbed from me anymore. But I'm going to make a choice. I'm going to make a choice to let God heal me and to honor my mother and my father so that they can place them up, and I'm going to draw from what heaven put in them. Not recognizing what they're not. And what will happen is, you come under the authority, you'll come under a heaven flow, though you'll find out that God actually put things in them, and all of a sudden, they, because they're raised in that place, it's like the same way that when you put something in the light, you now, when it's raised up into the light, you can see something about that you couldn't see before. The potential that was in that to cast, uh, I, I remember my wife, she got, when we were first um, dating in high school, and she was a senior in high school, and I asked her to marry me, and I put a ring on her finger. It was during basketball season, and uh, we got married three weeks out of high school, right? And I had been working, so I, as a high schooler, and I thought, you got to buy the big diamond, so I did, right? And I was working, so it was just cash. I thought, I'm doing it, and I'm buying, and I kind of got in trouble for that, honestly, with people, because their diamond, her diamond was bigger than other people's diamond, you know? Other moms and stuff, like, why does he buy a big diamond? I don't know, but here's what I'm saying. I love looking at that thing sparkle. And I would love, there would be times that you could take it in shining in the car when it was clean, right? And since then, we've lotion our hands. And, you know, we get married. It's not a, but we would shine. And, like, the car would go rainbows. You know, like, you just could see. And I, we, the first time I ever uh, had heard how uh, obnoxious it was, it, it was at a basketball game. Uh, and there was just all this drama around it. We were at a, a smaller Christian school. And her, one of our good friends was like, Evan, you're blinding me with your diamond ring. I'm sitting up in the bask- up in the top section of the bleachers, and you're like doing this, and I keep catching the glimmer of the, the lights on my eye. All I'm saying is with that, when you hold things up, when you would, she would go, yeah! She's, he, he's like, bro, quit. Of course, not bro, but thank you, Lord. So <clears throat> this morning... We're talking about honoring your father and your mother. And some of us got a better handle on it than others. Um, Some of us had uh, experienced maybe a few more hurdles to get over. But can I tell you, the Bible says that there's no temptation that's not common to man. And God will never allow you to be tempted in a way uh, to where you can't overcome it. So there is no hurt, not just with mom and dad. Let's talk sons and daughters. There's no hurt in your home. This is whole family. There is no hurt in your home. There is no history in your home that is too devastated that the hand of God cannot restore or heal. There's no betrayal in marriage. There's no, I'm just telling you, when you get God involved, most things are possible. Is that right? Oh, no, no, it's all things. So with him, all things are possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. If we put God in it, in the middle of it, if we put God, God in it, I'm telling you what, he can heal. He can restore. He can redeem and buy back. And you can, you can spend those last days with dad, if it, even if it was next to him on the bed. You can have it. It's a promise, 
if you want it. You know, I found that the, the, this is the most amazing thing. As I was going through some notes earlier this week, um, just for whatever reason, not so much for anything but for me, but I had written down something that though the seed has all this great potential, it's only released by our will. Like, think about a, a watermelon seed. And I use the, that seed has all the potential to grow a melon, but it never will unless I choose to plant it. It's amazing how our choice is so involved with the Word of God. The, word about, the Bible tells us the Word of God is a seed. What I, how I treat that seed, where I put that seed, how I tend that seed, my will is extremely involved to the potential of what God can do or what His Word can do. So um, let, let's, let's go ahead and jump here. I want, I want you to, uh, we're going to talk about not only, so honoring the Lord, but how this starts, Joshua 24, verse 15. And it says, if you'll, if you'll throw it up there, Joshua 24, verse 15. It says, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, this is the start of dishonor. This is the start of, and this is the, this is the crux of honor or dishonor. When dad says clean your room, when mom says clean your room, because this is not just a Father's Day message. This is a whole home message. This is a whole life message. This is a, it goes well with you and you live long, well, to the end life message. Right here. Undesirable. When, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you're going to serve. So this is, when, when, when a word comes to us that's like, go, you need to clean your room, all right, this is again, and we're like, huh. again, if you go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. He's, he's declaring, Paul's declaring here, that honor is greater than obedience, Honor is greater than obedience. Maybe we're good on the outside of performing acts to mom and dad. Maybe we're good on the outside of performing acts to the Lord. You know, because other people are watching. So I've got to look the part. But what is in the heart? Is it annoying to do what the Lord has asked you to do? Is it... This is where even where finances are involved. Your heart. This is, he says, where your treasure is, there your heart is. This is important. But listen, all through, he says, therefore, choose for yourself whom you're going to serve. It's the, it's the ver- very verse that we just went down, down through in Matthew chapter 6, it, all, the, how it correlates. Your heart is so involved. Uh, whether you're going to serve the gods your ancestors beyond, beyond the river Euphrates um, or the gods of the Amorites in the land you're living. But as, and I love this, and I love this dads. This is for dads today. But as for me and my house, God gave you authority over your house. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And today I have dads sitting here that are declaring, as for me and my house, we're serving the Lord. Whether you missed it, whether we've fallen down and skinned our knee, whether we didn't get it right, whether we lost our temper and cussed the kids, whether whatever happened, happened, listen, you're still saying, we're serving the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Like when I look out and see all these men saying, we're serving the Lord. Yeah, I might, but we're serving the Lord. That's incredible. That's incredible. First Samuel chapter 2, 29 through 30. He says this, and so we're talking about honoring our father and mother. We're talking about where does dishonor start? Dishonor starts when what a parent decides is undesirable to the son or to the daughter. When dishonor starts, when what the Lord says is undesirable to me. This is why it's so important to decide in our heart and truly believe that the, the borders that the Lord has for me, they fall. The boundaries, they fall for me in pleasant places. 
And when the Lord says something to me, the same way when mom and dad see, say something to me, it's because I said so. Why did they say so? Well, because the Lord's ways are higher than ours. As far as the heavens are above the earth, so are his ways are. So it, let me say it this way. He sees from here where we see right here. That's the, God sees this way where we see this way. Can I tell you, mom and dad, having walked through a few more things, they see young man, young lady from here. That you, I know you don't like this. I know you don't want to do this. I know, I know. But they're saying what they're saying from here. And not only that, God chose them. And what God chooses, he also graces to stand. There's a grace to be a mom and dad. So there's some young people that are, that are about to have a baby. Guess what? What comes with the, that baby, Grace? You've heard people talk about the love that all of a sudden fills your heart. How could I love a, a, something? I don't know. It just happens. And then maybe if you're having another baby, you're like, how could I love the next one? I'm just worried I won't love the next one like I love the next one. And all of a sudden, it just happened. And we talk about the love. But can I tell you what happens with this one who has a personality like this? Not only does love hit you for that Matthew, but grace hits you to train Matthew. And then you got a Matthew, and then you got a Samuel, and all of a sudden the Samuel hits, and you're like, love hits, but so does grace hits. The gift to teach that kid that's different than this kid. And then you have another one, you're like, I don't know if I can love a third one like I love those ones. And all of a sudden this other little Caleb hits, and you're just like, love hits, but so does grace. A gift to teach and to train and to impart and to say some things. Now, I'm not saying we always are yielded to the grace. No. But to say some things to all of them that they won't like. But they will like. When they just get a little further on down the road. And, and, and they'll get a little further on down the road. And what God designed to be together and to be a whole family. It's not when you're 18 that family ends. It's for, it's for generations. It's all the way to, to when mom and dad are needing your help to walk them or roll them into the house. Yeah, I did say into the house. You know, that, we don't want to hear this today because we have houses because we got things going on. I, I'm not downing on you. I'm t we're going to look at the word on this. Taking care of mom and dad is important. And if that's how you're going to take care of them, okay, then visit them. Be with them. The Bible tells us this. He says, you want, why don't you actually, religion starts, it says, when you take care of your mom and dad. Well, go ahead and put it up there, 1 Timothy 5, 4. <clears throat> he says this, but if, if a widow has children or grandchildren, in other words, there's a, there's a lady who's up in age, okay, this is this picture. I have it in both the ESV, and I think, I don't know if you have it in the TPT or not. I know we don't really. Uh, oh, there we go. <clears throat> it says, but if they have children or grandchildren at home, then it is only proper uh, to let them provide for the ones who raised them when they were children, for kindness uh, begins at home, and it pleases God. Uh, if you put it back up the ESV. So you kind of get this picture of what, what it looks like. Religion actually starts in the home. It starts in the home. It says, this, you gotta, you, when you and I show godliness to the, first let's show godliness to their own household and to make uh, some return to their parents, for this is pleasing to the, in the sight of the Lord. It's amazing. Honor your father and mother isn't, doesn't have an expiration date on it. And this message, I'm not talking to a bunch of fifth graders here. This message fits 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, 70-year-olds. This message fits us. It fits us. It's, and it's pleasing to me. And can I tell you, there's a grace for a child to also care for mom and dad. It's just too hard, no, if you say so. Yeah. If it's undesirable to you. Anyway, let's go back to 1 Samuel 2, uh, 29 through 30. He says, when they... Uh, when 
this is, uh, this is the scripture that maybe you know, uh, verse 30, where it says, those who honor me, I will honor. And what's happening is this honor is happening for the Lord. And, and it says, why do you kick up my sacrifice and my offering, which you've commanded in my dwelling place, and honor your sons more than me? The Lord's talking uh, to Eli here, who was a priest. And Eli had completely decimated, in a sense, uh, decimated or not that, well, that's not the word I'm looking for. He had um, made the thing, the temple just not unholy, okay? He had desecrated, desecrated the temple. Anyway, uh, and his sons too. I mean, they were doing ungodly things in the temple. Um, and he goes on to say, you're eating my sacrifices. You're making yourselves fat with the best offerings that Israel brings. And then the next verse. He says, therefore, the Lord God of Israel says, I said, indeed, that your house and your house of your father would walk before me forever. But now, says the Lord. So here's the deal. There are times our decisions. We don't want to hear this, but there are times our decisions, our decisions, with the design that God made. And what he made and what he set forth to, to, to work because of dishonor. We don't have the flow that God designed. So he goes on to say this, that there were, I, I had this designed for you and your house to experience this for generations. But because of dishonor, he said, I, I'm pulling that from you. He says, uh, for forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Honor is big to God. I just want to say it that way. Honor is extremely big to God. You know why? Because man looks at the outside, obedience. But God looks at, where does he look at? The heart. So honor is a heart thing. Honor is a heart thing, and it goes back to where does it start? If it seems undesirable to me. If it seems undesirable to me, Lord, I thank you that, you, that, and here's the deal. If it's undesirable to you, all you have to do is adjust your heart. If the word of God is undesirable to you, and you're just, un, all, uh, here's what is, you're saying, is I'm unwilling or I don't like that, you can just say, you know what? This is what the Lord said. We're going to do that, and we're going to do it with joy. That quick. And guess what? You honor the Lord. Honor comes down. And guess what? It's going well with you. What he designed for you, you get to partake of. Why? Because honor. You came under heaven's design. God wants you and I. He is our father. The Lord invited us. Jesus invited you and me in when the disciples in Luke said, Lord, teach us to pray. He said, okay, pray like this. Our father. What, no, God? No, no, our Father. Father God? No, no, no. Our Father. He invited, he invited you and me in, into, Jesus did, to, to, to look to him as the source for everything, as the flow for, get, for the plan for my life, to esteem him. He sees it. Hallowed be your name. You're lifted up high, far above. You looked all the way through that. You, we'll look at that here in a moment. Let's keep going here. I want to go to another verse here. Um, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 10. See, a father is the one you give the right to teach you. This is what a father is. This is why when Jesus went to... The disciples recognized something, and Jesus declared something many times. I don't do except for what I see the father do, or I don't say except for what I see or hear the father say. He declared that multiple times, and it's written in the Gospels. So that means that those disciples had to hear Jesus say that. But they also recognized that Jesus prayed and something was different. This is where he got his words. He got his direction from the Father. He got all of these things. You know how he got that direction? He let it in. You know why he let, how he let it in? Listen, he's, this is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 10. Listen, my son, he accepted what, Jesus, what the Lord said. Hey, I want you to go here. Hey, I want you to lay your life down. Hey, I want you to... He accepted, and here we are in Proverbs chapter 4, and if you read this whole chapter, you'll find that it's all about words and wisdom. And if you go on after, after this, it, it, verse 18 talks about guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. What he's talking about is let your heart hold the words of a father's instruction. He said, accept, listen my son, accept 
what I say, and the years of your life will be many. Man, this is big, isn't it? Accept your father's words. That's what he's talking about. You'll go, you go read Proverbs chapter 4, and you're going to find, My son, my son, listen to my words. My son, listen to my words. My son, put your words in your, in, into your heart. And, and also guard your heart. It's amazing. And then it says, it goes on to say, um, Proverbs 4.18 I quoted, it says that the path of the righteous is, shines brighter and brighter. So I quoted that wrong earlier, but Proverbs 14 says that the path of the righteous, when you and I step in and follow God's ways, when you and I follow, it's going to get bright. It's going to get bright. This is a promise from the Lord. So he's, but you got to accept his words. So there's, so you just got to accept him and be like, not only accept him, but part of accepting them is celebrating them. If you're going to guard your heart and you're going to guard God's words, you can't just say, well, God said... Well, mom said we have to do this. Mom said we got to go clean our room. No, you got to say, hey, we're going to go clean it. You got to celebrate. You only protect what you celebrate. How many of you know that when you stop celebrating the side by side or the car or that fishing boat, it sits out and it gets beat on by the sun? But when you celebrate it, it gets parked and put away in Paul. The, everything else sits out, and that goes in the garage. You only protect what you celebrate. Do, do we celebrate hearing from mom and dad again? I hope we call mom and dad today. Just to hear from them. Celebrate. Mom and dad. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Let's go. Mm, let's go here. Let's go. Um, uh, and can I can I tell you like what's good for the goose is good for the gander. <laughs> what does that mean? It just simply means um, the Lord's talking to me. Matthew fifteen one through five or one through one. Matthew fifteen one through fifteen. Now this is this is the passage. Um, Let's just read it. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem. They asked, uh, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Okay. Uh, Jesus replied, uh, why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? So there's, there's a conversation between Pharisees and Jesus, and they're like, your disciples aren't doing all the outside stuff. Obedience, obedience, obedience. And Jesus is like, uh, you guys aren't doing... You guys are making a show, and you're disregarding what I commanded you to honor your father and your mother. And because you're not honoring your father and mother, you have no honor for the Lord. You watch what's said here. Because you're not honoring your father and your mother, you have no honor for the Lord. Oh, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. The Lord's calling them out here because of how they treat their parents. For God said, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother, they'll be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father and mother is devoted to God. Okay, we just read in Timothy about taking care of mom and dad. But then there, these, these guys are saying, well, we would help mom and dad, and we would take care of you, and we would honor you. And I know we probably could help provide, but you know, this is for God. That calf, you know, I know you're hungry, Mom, and you can eat turnips again, but this calf, I don't want to give it to Mom or Dad. You know, they never gave me anything growing up. They're just a bunch of, it's good for them to get a little whatever. They were eating cereal, and I had to eat this, you know, or they got to go out to eat, and we had always had to eat cereal, whatever it might be, bitterness, bitterness, undesirable. And here he says, but if you say, uh, they're, they're, go back one verse, I don't, I got to pick up where, but you say it's, uh, that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father and mother is, is, is that's, that's God's. 
He says, uh, they, are not to, they are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus, you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You make it of no effect. In other words, here's what he's saying. The word of God says this. Your tradition says, well, you don't have to give to your mom and dad. And this is a tradition that the Pharisees made up and said, kind of like maybe the church is like, well, we need some more money because we're not stewarding it well. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean that. say that out loud. We need some more of your money and put pressure on you uh, to give more, not just because there's a project and a building project, or, but like truly like, hey, we need more money, fundraiser, 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 help us, help us pay for this. How many of you have watched this in government? Hey, we're going to raise a cent tax, or maybe you've seen it in different capacities. We're not going to pull out different examples because that would be calling things out. But where it's like, bro, steward your money. Steward your money. And, and, and so because of lack of stewardship of funds or whatever it might be, and the priests really wanting to have something, they're like, well, here's what we're going to do. Chris, listen, I know that was for mom and dad, but if you want to give that to the temple, the Lord, he'll see on that, and he'll say, that's a holy one, and I'll give you one of those gold, extra gold strings to hang on your ro- ribbon or on your, on your robe. And, um, and so you can just say that's for the Lord. We'll give you that. And we'll take care of that. So you don't have to give that to mom and dad if you give it to the Lord. And you'll get a gold tassel. So what do you think? Gold tassel? This is what he's saying. This is what's going on. He says they're not honoring their father and mother. Look at the next one. He said, you hypocrites. You think one thing. You're acting one way. And so you're deceived. Sometimes we're deceived... Just simply this verse, these verses. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me. Are they worshiping the Lord? But they're worshiping in vain. So what does that mean? Their worship is actually a worship of self. In the last days, men will be lovers of... uh... Can I tell you that there's much worship that goes on in the church that is actually just worship of self? You want to get some things back right? You want to get things back whole? Come under. Begin. Start back here. Get the heart thing right. Get back to this thing that has this commandment, this promise. You put and begin to honor and esteem your father and mother. You'll find that when you do that, well, I don't want to do that, I don't want to do that. You'll find when you come in line with that simple, tangible thing that you can deal with here and now, that your heart towards what you can't see comes in line. And when the Lord says something that's difficult, you'll say, okay, I don't, I'm going to do it. I can't see the end from the beginning. He sees the end from the beginning. He sees up here. But I'm going to come in line. And what's going to happen is I'll walk right down and it'll go well with me and I'll live long on the earth. This starts, this is for young people now. This is for wherever we're at now, right here. Don't worship in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Like you're keeping the rules. The Lord looks where? The heart. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. In other words, what comes out. The words, again, this goes back to that scripture I talked in James. It says, out of your heart, right? Out of your well, can there be bitter water and sweet water? No, there can't. And this is what he's saying. You, when you hold something in your heart that's wrong, you, you won't be able to honor. You won't let the, the flow of your life won't be honoring to your parents and won't be honoring to the Lord. What goes into someone's mouth is not defiled, but what comes out of their mouth is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? <laughs> I love that line. He replied, every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. He says this. They are blind guides. If the blind leads the blind, both will fall in the pit. Peter explained, he says, explain this parable to us. When, if you and I are going with what's desirable to us, you'll find you become blind. When you and I, what, what, if 
it's undesirable to you, when I begin to dishonor, because I dishonor, I don't elevate what my, because of it's undesirable, I'm leading myself into a place where I become blind, and then the next generation will become blind. How I treat in the home, this is talking about generations, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Sometimes we think that verse, uh, honor me and I will honor thee. When it actually says, Lord said, those who honor me, I will honor. I think we think it's honor me, then I'll honor thee. If you honor me, then I'll honor thee. We kind of have moved in this culture, in this generation, in this world to that place to where even Christianity is about self-service. And it's not service to him anymore. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. I'm the one that's to be giving him or getting him the Coke. And, and the double cheeseburger. Or what, what, you wanted the steak? Like, when you go out today, if you go out today, or if the next time you go out, they don't give you what they think you should have. They give you what you ordered. And you know what? The Lord, when he declares something, it's not a suggestion. It truly is an order. Honor your father and mother, y'all, because then it goes well. No, honor your father and mother because this is an order. And this order is, has a promise to attach to it. You want life to go well with you? How you honor your mom and dad here will determine how you honor your father there. What we're doing as we train our kids and as we are in a home, we're training our kids to transfer their dependence from this father and mother to their heavenly father. And yet, honor remains. And yet, honor remains. This morning, um, <laughs> it's crazy, reasoning away the commands of God. That's what that whole passage is about. You can reason away the command of God. We're going to close with this this morning, and we're going to read um, where, where the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray. And um, <clears throat> really, this, the, what I had got in my heart, and it, it's not for everybody. This message uh, was for everybody, but the, what I had got in my heart is not, and that was forgiving mom and dad. That's what this message was. This, what, this, what, that was the business here today, forgiving mom and dad. Whole families. You can carry unforgiveness into, for mom and dad, in a sense, allow the enemy and that voice or that spirit or that whisper to be in your home. And you're going to, in a sense, deposit that into your children. And they get to carry that. And they can deposit that into their children. Or you can break that. And you can declare that as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And the Lord told me, those that hurt you, forgive them. How many times? Again. And there's grace to do it. So I want to, I want to go to, um, and, and again, when the Lord speaks something, it's a pleasant thing. Because he sees my end. From where I'm at right now. So Luke chapter 1, one or 11, 1 through 4. Uh, it says this. On the day Jesus was praying in a certain place. And I, I just believe this will just encourage you. Um, uh, even when you pray. It's just something the Lord was speaking to my heart. Uh, differently in the Lord's prayer. I had never seen it th this way before. But as I, was do it, as I was looking at that. And just seeing our Father. It just. I, I, I saw that. Jesus invited the disciples in and give them a father when they were teachable. That's just what, when they were teachable, all of a sudden something was open to them that they didn't have before. Because what they were saying is, we desire what you're hearing. We desire the way that you're working, the way that you're operating. We see something and we desire that. 
And so the ways of God and the ways were desirable to them. And so the Lord's like, okay. Jesus, tell them, our Father. Let's read here. Just says, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father. Maybe you are familiar with this passage more in, uh, in Matthew. But this is where it says that the disciples asked him to pray. This is in Luke. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father. In other words, Father, he's my provider. Father, he's my protector. Father, he's my director. Man, I'll tell you, there, there's a load of word. He's the one who loves me, and his mercy for me is just it's new every day. But he says, say, Father, and he said, you're lifted up. You see from up here. You're holy, rever- I, you, you know what I don't. As far as the heavens are above the earth, so, so are your ways. You, you declare the end from the beginning. You're, Father, I worship you. I thank you that what I'm coming to you about right now, you have already know. You've seen it. You have a, the answer. I'm coming to you because your ways are higher. Father, I'm looking to, I'm looking to learn. So when, you, when I pray, we don't just pray to get something. We pray to receive his word. We're not just praying, you know, so I can have a boat or some kind of situational thing. But the lack of understanding is the, you have, of the father and him being your father is just because of lack of conversation. He says this, hallowed be your name. And then he says this, your kingdom come. Make sure you recognize that Jesus or that the Lord is up here. Far above. He sees things up here. But then let's make sure you remember this. John and Peter, remember this. His kingdom. You're a soldier. You're a servant. His kingdom. His kingdom come. Not your will. Not my will. His will be done. Here on earth. Just like it is in heaven. I'm quoting out of Matthew here. But he says, your kingdom come. Next one. Then he says, remember this. When you talk to him, you're the source. Thank you, Father. Every good gift comes from you. All these have scriptures. Every, everything I'm declaring to you has scriptures with it. Like what I just said, every good gift comes from you, James 1.17. And he, he, you know, even when you're not good, guess what he has in mind to you and me? To be good. That's crazy. It, it makes my head go bent. How can you want to be good to me even when I'm not love? Father. It's the same way you are with your children. I really, I, I told them I would get them this. How many of you have ever been around this, this dilemma? I really want to give them this. I really want to do this for them. But this, 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 and this. And so you try to navigate a way to, so, to get them back to where you can get them that again. Can I tell you that God's doing that with us today? We might be over here and, and over at the, this tree that we don't belong, where we're critiquing, measuring, devaluing, dishonoring and the Lord's like I need to get you over here I need to get you over here so you've been at this tree for a long time I'm going to bring you a whole message on just your mom and dad so that your whole family and all your days can be whole. Give us this day our daily bread, every good gift, and forgive us of our sins. Uh, I've, I've wrote this one down. Your righteousness, you're so full of mercy. It, it is your righteousness that we're not consumed. Lamentations 3:22. He's so full of mercy. It is your mercy, O Lord, that we're, that we're not consumed. He says, so for, forgive us our sins, but we want to imitate you. Lord, as you forgave us, 
let us forgive you. Or not forgive, as you forget, let us forgive them, rather. And lead us not into temptation. I wrote that last verse right here. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And that's the closing verse. And God is faithful. This is the end of 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And God is faithful. But when you are tempted, he will always provide for you a way out. Listen, there's a way out and a way away from where God told you not to to be or designed you not to be in a place of unforgiveness with mom and dad in a place of dishonor can I tell you there's a way out and it's genuinely coming to the Lord and declaring your forgiveness it's making a choice to forgive mom and dad and not to hold past suffered wrongs against them and begin to say what God says about them and thank the Lord for who he chose for you And recognize in them is a source from heaven. Honor that. Celebrate that. Protect that. And you'll partake of it. Let's stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. Let's just close our our eyes this morning. We'll just do some business with the Lord. Our hearts. That's where the Lord does business. You know, it's amazing. You can be up here and teaching and talking, and you can see the most blank look on people's faces. Even frowns. And it's because the Lord's working. He's talking to you. He's talking to you this morning. Because he wants some things right. He wants you to get, and he wants them to also to receive. There's an exchange. See, God, when God puts things in proximity and he connects them, there is a flow. There's a flow. And the same way is true from, it's for every generation. There's a flow to and there's a flow through, but there's a flow there's, a, there's an exchange, the same way that roots and leaves both feed a tree. Every generation, your connections are to feed, we're to feed one another. God is doing business because he needs all that he put here on earth, all that he put in your life. He needs us to be partaking of that. Every generation, there's wisdom that you need for today that God deposited it into mom and dad. There's healing, there's direction, there's help. So let's just close our eyes again. Father, thank you for your word today. Even if it's tough, even if it's strong, even if it's not what we wanted to hear, Thank you. Thank you for loving us enough to bring us back into communion and under your authority and communion with our families, with mom and dad. There's some direction today. There's some correction today. There's some paths that have been arranged for the next few years to walk with mom and dad because you're making a choice to get it right you can have what you wouldn't have had before Lord thank you for the supply that's in mom and dad to sons and daughters thank you for sons and daughters given the grace to honor their mother and father and in doing so we honor you Lord if there's a place of unforgiveness in our heart where we've held something against mom and dad we ask you first to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness I'm leading you in a prayer this has got to be yours but we ask you to forgive us where we've held sins 
against them. Right now we say, as you forgave us freely, we choose to forgive freely. The same way you washed us with your blood and you made us white as snow, remove the sin and the stain as far as the east is from the west. I'm asking you right now to remove the hurt, to heal the wound and the stain of a past by your Holy Spirit. Help, strengthen, equip. Remind us of every good thing that you've said. Remind us of the good. Remind us of the good. Holy Spirit, remind us of the sacrifice and the love. And we celebrate what you gave us today. In mom, in dad, we celebrate them. And we say thank you for bringing restoration in what you designed. We declare with our mouths a whole family. I have a whole family. Somebody with me. I have a whole family. In the name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're here today, before I close, I just want to do this. Um, if you're here today, I know it's Father's Day. I know sometimes it seems like Mother's Day people come and come to church because of mom or dad but maybe you're here because dad said I want you to come to church and maybe you haven't given your life to Jesus I'll tell you what the father's waiting he's looking and so if that's you if you with a lift of a hand if you don't know where you'd spend eternity if your life was required of you today give me an invitation to come to come to the father through Jesus Christ lift your hand loud right where it's at real strong and tall I can't see it if it's not there and we'll just lead you in a prayer of salvation thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Well, praise the Lord. I don't see any hands, but you know what? God loves us. Isn't that amazing? That He loves us. He loves you. And just let that love that is given to you as you guys go today, just let it be used to love others. Love on your families. Love your mom and dad. Make those phone calls. Say those words. Say the words that you think. Don't go without it. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.